Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the great country of Brazil. It's Brazil winning the opening tip, attacking the basket to the right, wearing the Brazilian colors, going up against Puerto Rico, and uh, not taking any prisoners here right at the start of the game. Brazil make the most of their first possession, and Mariano gets his team on the board. Clavel comes out and nails a three pointer. Yago Santos over to Mariano. Not just an inside player. And there the follow not there for Jorginho. Um, now Puerto Rico with a chance to add to their lead. Condit. Yago. And Yago gets it to go. Yago played at the last World Cup. It was played in China. And Yago reaches in and fouls Ortiz. Clavel again. He is just an out and out score, isn't he? Never met a shot he didn't like because, quite frankly, he can make all of them. Mariano takes his time off. Oh, kind of an unusual uh, attempt at the layup the first time. Could have gone up and dunked it or been a little bit more decisive, but nevertheless was able to get the rebound and score. Ortiz goes hard to the hole. Yago. And nobody boxes out. Getting the putback flush. Caboclo, his first two. Caboclo, excuse me, two points. One rebound, Clavel bumped out on the perimeter by Jorginho. And Caboclo, oh, even took a shot to the face. And didn't, wasn't picked up by the refs. That was a serious pop. Here's Ford. Good start for Puerto Rico on the road. Bruno gets it over to his own teammate. They both play in Germany. And coming out and stroking the three pointer. And Ardo Mendel, his first three. So, Jorginho, the only player in the starting five for Brazil not to score yet. Now, after the, the long miss, Brazil attack. Nice bounce pass, but traveling. And Waters uh, must have gone down. Being told not to flop by the referee. So that was Leonardo Mendel. There's Waters. He had the heroics in the first meeting. Into Condit. Passes it back outside. Three point shot. 
Lynn Ford can't get that one to drop. Leonardo hands it off and turns it over. Now Clavel. Waters hooping and scooping. Misses the layup, but Condit is there for the putback. Yago outside to Leonardo and Mariano with the rebound hands it off to Leonardo Mendel drives in this time he doesn't make a mistake able to get it off just before Condit swiped down to block the shot Clavel pulls up and you better believe it that is three and he is fouled and he comes uh, doesn't try to get up yet he's holding his right ankle but with less than five minutes into the game Clavel has just reminded everybody as if they needed to be reminded he is one of the premier shooters in the game but how long will he stay in the game that is the big question hopefully it's okay came down awkwardly with his right foot. Watch his right foot when he comes down, if you can see it. Oh, yeah, he turned it. He's trying to walk it off. Because I think if he goes and sits down, uh, can tighten up a little bit. Marcelino is going to come into the game. Here it is again. Yeah, he just strange that he would do that, knowing how many three pointers he takes per day. He gets the shooting in. And yeah, he just kind of self inflicted. I mean, I suppose really the call is that Jorginho De Paula took away his landing space and that's why they called the, the foul a little too close but I'm not sure you could blame it on uh, Jorginho so one free throw coming I guess they wanted to review it to make sure it wasn't unsportsmanlike Again, the referees, Leonardo Salazar from Argentina. There's Waylon from Canada, and also Daniel Garcia Nieves from Venezuela. Let's we'll see if uh, rolling his ankle affects him at all. It might just have affected him makes three threes and not just easy threes but then goes to the line where he's not guarded and misses it here's a jump off beautiful play Mariano off and running he's got six points well tied at 15 and a little sloppiness here creeping into the play of Ford Mariano gets it down low to Bruno Caboclo. Now back to Marcelino. And Mariano is sloppy with the ball, and Clavel comes in and does not score. Ball is knocked off the rim. So that was a missed opportunity. But yeah, it's a good idea that Clavel gets out there, tries to loosen that ankle up. I think if he comes out, it won't be a good thing. Here he is to Bruno. Hello, Bruno Caboclo with the two-handed jam. He's got four points. Tremont Waters, are you kidding me? 
That was a thing of beauty, and he just made it look so easy, so effortless. It's not necessarily about acceleration, it's just about control, stability, being strong with the basketball. Leonardo drives in, hands it off to Caboclo. This time he is rejected. Tremont Waters and rewarding the big fella who got the block, Romero, Ismail Romero, getting it done on both ends of the floor. Uh, Nelson Colon applauding. Vitor Benite. And Bruno Caboclo called for the foul. And that was Mariano unsuspecting Clavel, but then Mariano came down and knocked it off the rim. So he got his own back. And Marcelino throwing it down low to Mariano on that one. And here is Romero with the rejection. Not something that Caboclo is uh, necessarily accustomed happening to him. Steven Thompson Jr. is going to inbound the basketball. He's in the game. Also checking in is Philip Wheeler. Here's Waters. Bounce pass. Steven Thompson. Let's stay with it, but Marcelino has it. Left wide open, and the three pointer is good from Hetchheimer. He still got it. The big fella could always shoot it. He'll be shooting until the cows come home. Waters, a little turnaround. Chimer is now 36 years of age, so considering bigs usually uh, develop later, still got some life in the legs. Always has had a soft touch. Here he is. Now in the books of Flamingo. Ball knocked away and the pass up the floor to Thompson. Marcelino, assured of legendary status in Brazil. He has just been an icon. He is an icon. Takes his time and gets it to drop. Again, look to stress that lead. Job Ortiz. Uh, that was Thompson. He's good getting out on the break. Three point shot. 
There's time long. And Thompson out of bounds. And Chimer again. Not much separating these two teams right now, that's for sure. Romero hands it off. Great move. How about that from Romero? Just such control, the big fella. Almost as if he kind of sashayed into the lane. Watch this. How's this for a little bit of salsa? And just puts it up high off the glass and in. Actually, I don't know what the dance is in Puerto Rico. And the shot is good. Actually, it is salsa. Hey, I do know more than I realize. It's a style of dancing most people associate with Puerto Rico. I'm sure there's a place is certainly on salsa nights to go and do a little bit of salsa. So looks like Mr. Romero must be able to practice when he's playing basketball. And how about that? The drive and the basket from Vitor Benite. Two-time basketball champions, league champ, former Olympian. Very popular player, getting it up and getting it to drop. Oh, usual to see Vitor Benite miss a free throw, but he does. Steven Thompson right at the end and we're right where we started. We're all tied up Brazil 24 Puerto Rico 24 at the end of one. Those three threes for Puerto Rico belong to the Clavel. Brazil 9 of 12 inside the arc. Mariano. Got it going early, but so did this guy, Clavel. Yago showing his quickness. Clavel again from the corner. And Mariano just patiently. Well, I think he could have scored the first time. Ortiz with a powerful drive. Oh, and that was the punishment that Caboclo took from Ortiz. And Leonardo Mendel driving in as well. Alley oop pass. So remember, as you look at this, Clavel thought he had a layup, missed the layup. And Mariano went up and knocked it off the rim. Bruno Caboclo, we can expect some big things from him tonight, I would imagine. Hey, folks, get the Courtside 1891 app in your smartphone. Scan in that barcode, and you'll get stream schedule scores for all of the qualifiers, something that you definitely want to have at your fingertips. So Brazil went tonight. They qualify for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And let's be honest, what's the FIBA Basketball World Cup without Brazil? You'd love to see them. Uh, but the same with Puerto Rico.
Second quarter action underway. Puerto Rico, again, they can't qualify tonight, uh, but they need some help. And I'll remind you what that is as Puerto Rico and Romero drives in, and the foul has indeed been called. Here he is again on Hetzheimer. So Puerto Rico qualify if they win this game. USA beats Uruguay and Colombia wins against Mexico. So three things have to happen for them tonight to qualify. They can take care of one of those by winning against Brazil. But they also need help. For Brazil, they know they just have to win this game. And they qualify. Now, this thing is going to be anything but straightforward for either of these two teams tonight. They look very evenly matched. Benite, Gabriel, Galvanini, Hetzheimer, Marcelino, and Guiz Santos on the court right now. And the ball has been turned over. Foul called on Galvanini, Gabriel Galvanini. Jordan Howard has the ball, number three, checking in. Also in the game, Timaj Parker. I like how the coaches are getting all their players in. You want everybody to be involved. And just a terrific launch pad there for Romero, who has just taken off nine points since coming into the game. Explosive leap, explosive player. Santos has it knocked away. The foul. Oh, offensive foul called. Oh, Romero is just a big, big man. So interestingly, calling that on Santos. A little full court pressure here, being offered by Brazil. Luis Santos guarding the smaller Jordan Howard. Nice pass to the corner. Steven Thompson. He's got to put it up. You got to get it up. Did he get it up in time? Yes, he did. And look at Romero with a game high 11 points. Firing up his team. Inspirational stuff from big bad number 28.
So coming back out, so you can see that the guys that were in the extended squad for Brazil are here tonight, including Alinho Corazza, played for Sao Paulo in the FIBA Intercontinental Cup just a couple weekends ago. What a great story Sao Paulo is. Here is Mariano. And it was Marcelino's uh, Tenerife that beat Sao Paulo in that FIBA Intercontinental Cup final. Here he is, Jordan showing that. Showing that attitude, Jordan Howard missing it from deep, but now an unsportsmanlike foul has been called on Romero. <laughs> I don't know why Romero elected to go that route. He's already made the message, sent the message out that he's one of the uh, the big dogs in this game. Uh, you don't want to give away a potential four or five points. And Mariano <laughs> doesn't go after Romero. I don't understand. I don't understand why. He bowled him over. He steamrolled him with his team up by six points. I mean, this could be a huge swing in the game. He's playing so well, though. Coach needs to keep him in there. Oh, I haven't seen him go up to him and check on him to make sure he's okay. <laughs> Keep an eye on that matchup. Mariano and Romero. Maybe there's a little bit of history there that I'm not aware of. Bruno Caboclo. And they get away with just giving up two points. Quickly they go. And Parker goes in and he's fouled by Mariano. I like it. You know, you could have just put up the three, but you see a little bit of uh, a path to the basket, take it strong, try to dunk it, and good things probably going to happen. Puerto Rican team has a very nice feel to it. Parker only makes one of two. Uh, but it feels, it looks like Cologne's making some progress with this uh, Barquas, Barquas squad. Bruno Caboclo passes up the jumper, drives, they get after it, and here comes Jordan Howard. Clavel and has it pocket picked by Leonardo up to Iago Santos. I think Clavel getting a little careless with the basketball there. Leonardo knew what was coming. And after Clavel turned and complained to the referee that he was messing around. Leonardo Mandel said, okay, let's do it again. And he just took the ball right away from him. Very good player. So you see the shooting numbers for these two teams. They all came out like a house on fire. I'm just starting to wonder if it's Tremont Waters time now to really kind of assert himself. We saw Clavel come out and carry the team early. Then we've seen Romero come out. 
and really get involved. And just that play there for Clavel just looks like he's trying to do too much. That was Clavel trying to calm down Romero and say, come on, man, you got to think. Don't just go flatten somebody like this is a rugby game or an NFL game. So Tremont Waters back in the game three minutes and change into the second quarter. We got also still Jordan Howard out there. Ends up putting it up. He's fouled. He's got a chance for a four-point play. Are you kidding me? Jorginho. Just left his hand in. So Jorginho De Paula commits the foul. We've got a potential four point play. And in fact, we have a four point play, the first four point play of the game. And the way this thing has gone, it might not be the last. Jordan Howard, his first four points of the game, coming in spectacular style as Puerto Rico go up by seven. Oh. Uh, Mariano diving for the basketball. You do not want to be Timaj Parker here. Look at this. Sacrificing the body and then, oh. <laughs> and you better have some muscle a little bit extra padding if Mariano is going to fall on you. It has been an absolute dream start, really, for Puerto Rico in this game. You're on the road. You're going up against a team that can qualify for the World Cup with a win. But you need a win. And, you know, you have uh, got your biggest lead of the game right now. Mariano for three. And Santos chases it. I don't know, sometimes when you're struggling and you want to make sure you get something positive, you drive to the basket. Now a chance to stretch that lead even more. There's Waters. Oh, it just goes right past him. But good recovery from Bruno Caboclo to come over and help out Leonardo Mendel. Something tells me Nelson Colon is going to have a very wet shirt by the end of the game tonight. He is sweating like the Dickens over there. Here's Clavel for three, and now the Clavel factor once again comes into the frame. Fourth three-pointer of the game. Yago Santos. They swing it. Guis Santos. Nice drive. Don't settle. Put it on the deck and get to the basket. That's what I like. So Clavel's shot was ruled at two. And you saw it right there. He thought it was a three. But the referee said, nope, that was a two. So he's only got three threes and a very long two. There's Romero back in the game. And a push, setting a pick. So 
So another foul on Romero. This time setting a pick and not blocking, not charging into somebody. Seems like ever since he did that play, Romero has had a negative effect on him. He needs to kind of get back to the way he was playing. Yago for three. Oh, forget it. What do I know about taking jump shots? If that's a high percentage shot for Yago Santos, let him take it. Howard goes back to Romero, holds on to the basketball, gets it over to Ortiz, drives in, and he's fouled. Good-looking shot from Yago. Again, getting that experience along with Bruno Caboclo playing for Ulm in Germany. He takes his time and makes the second one as well. Had a really tough drive in the first quarter. Here's Yago again, again, Yago! And he's got a big smile on his face. He's enjoying himself. And Jordan, are you kidding me? The second time in the game, Jordan Howard with a chance for four-point play. He's already had one four-point play. It's almost as if he was inviting it. And Gris Santos, oh boy. Well, this was uh, Yago owned the money for the second time. Gris <laughs> Santos. Frustrated. Well, Jordan Howard, what can you say? He can shoot the three. The hand in the face, it doesn't matter. If you're knocking him over, he's still going to make it. This time does not make the free throw for a four-point play. Mariano for three. Well, everything I said about driving to the basket, just throw it out the window because Brazil has done nothing but make three-pointers ever since. Cutting the deficit to three. Tough drive from Romero, earning a trip to the line where he sometimes struggles. Just a beautiful no-look bounce pass. Mariano two fouls and here's Romero at the line. And well, he definitely has had some adventures at the free throw line, but he looked good on that one. And does not get the second one. He came in shooting 45.2% at the line. So he's 19 of 42. Yago this time. Fouled by Ortiz.
Remember Atso Petrovic used to really sing the praises of Yago in the build up for the last World Cup. And it was great to see him actually make the team and the travel to China. Uh, but you can see that he's probably going to have a more prominent role this time. And this time the ball goes off the hands of Bruno Caboclo. Looks like a good pass from Mariano. Maybe just a tad bit high, although can you have a high pass to Bruno Caboclo the way he can get up? Oh, beautiful bounce pass again, but going up and missing the dunk. Nevertheless, Clavel gets it, and it works out even better for Puerto Rico because he gets his fourth three-pointer of the game. So it was Ortiz who missed the dunk, but now Leonardo Mendel goes in, throws it down. What a game. High-scoring game at that. Fun game. Jordan Howard. Romero. Ortiz. And fouled by Bruno Caboclo. Yeah, Cab Bruno Caboclo has to. You can see he's a little frustrated out there tonight. And he's got nobody to blame but himself. I mean, that's a foul. Sure, why the delay, but here's Ortiz at the line. So Ortiz just uh, one or two possessions ago just went in for a dunk. He missed it, but the ball ended up in the hands of Clavel, who hit a three pointer. So that's one, one of those times where missing a, a dunk is maybe not such a bad thing. To a seven point advantage. Tremont Waters reaches in and fouls Yago, who's really been good in this second quarter. There's so many good basketball players in the world. And when you see the way that Yago is playing right now, you can understand why it's a tough decision that a player of the ilk of Alino isn't in the team because it is fierce competition making this roster. Yago makes the first. Gustavo Conte used to be the assistant coach to Ruben Magnano. And Yago Santos has been terrific. 12 points. Here's Clavel. And great hustle. Leonardo for the second time steals the ball away from Clavel. Oh boy, Yago Santos just lost control of it. Ortiz has it. Passes it back outside. Jordan Howard. Clavel hustles down, saves it back in bounds. Great work from the Bordequas. Boy, that was a very tough move. Ortiz going right at Caboclo. Excuse me, going right at Benite. And that was Clavel falling asleep. But this is great work. Great focus by Ortiz, who looked like he might lose control of the basketball, but he was able to get it back, and they ended up getting points. Seven point lead. Oh, 
se ele driblar, você ataca. Aqui no ataque nós vamos fazer 21 lado. Tá certo? O Vitor. O Vitor vai ser o aqui no fundo, na lateral. O Léo vai vir e voltar para atacar. E depois o Vitor. Márcio, bloqueia parado. Para o Vitor escolher o que vai fazer. Se ele vai vir, você vai chutar atrás do bloqueio. Thiago again, he's got a couple of threes, he hit them back to back. Mariano showing he's got a good soft touch from outside. Leonardo has been a bundle of activity. Getting to the basket, knocking the ball away, particularly from Clavel twice. Yago steps back. This time does not get it to drop. We're good. Howard calls the play. Now Clavel. The pass. Condit. Yago. Vitor Benite. Spins. At the stripe. His attempt goes in and out. And now the follow. Also stays out. By Marcio Santos. Jordan Howard, look at that, finds the space, puts the right up from the elbow, and it's a nine-point lead. Well, Brazil, they can qualify for the World Cup tonight with a win, but right now they are on the losing end of this scoreline. And this is a good possession, and something happened with the clock, I think. Michael Whalen calls timeout. Not what you want right before halftime. But you got to get it right. Trying to read some lips there, but I think it was the clock, so shot clock. We certainly can't blame the referee. I mean, if he sees that the clock needs to be reset, it's got to be reset.
Well, I don't think those fans have all the time in the world. They don't care. They're enjoying themselves. Good music, good atmosphere. Giving us obviously Conti more time to compose his thoughts for the halftime team talk. I'm guessing. Not certain that he needs extra time, but if he does, he's getting it. Still working on the shot clock, is what it is. It's taking uh, a good five minutes or more to add a few seconds. Let's not forget the stakes are high for Conti, uh, for Cologne. We're talking about getting to the World Cup here, so you got to get it right. So the final seconds ticking off. Here's Yago. He drives in and the hand check. And Yago Santos earns the trip to the free throw line. Question is, did he go too early? Because with 5.8 seconds left now, there's plenty of time for Puerto Rico to get a shot. If Yago makes both of these, especially. So, might they put on some type of press? Nope. Oh, wow, look at that. Terrific play by Clavel. Now Waters gets in and great rim protection. Terrific play by Galvanini to stop the layup attempt from Waters. And maybe that double clutch right at the end of that is what prevented him from getting a better chance. If he'd just gone up from the right, just put it up, he might have had a better chance. So Galvanini goes up. It's a rejection, but it's Puerto Rico leading it 52 to 44 over Brazil at halftime. Second half underway. Still trying to claw back an eight point deficit. Mariano missing the first attempt down low. And the jump shot. That's a fall. Now Yago brings it up for Brazil. And the loop. Oh boy, look out. Here comes Bruno. Kind of took. Uh, was in the shadows, but his uh, own teammate Yago said, Bruno, let's get involved here, big boy. Throws in the lob. Clavel for three, nails another one. He has picked a great time to have a huge night from three point range. Oh, was that a two? I guess it was. That was behind the arc. And another. Three-pointer for Brazil, Mariano. 
And they cut it back to a five point game. Yeah, his foot, his right foot was on the line. See that? Funny, you've got a guy like Benite. That's what they're going to look at to see if that was a two or a three. You got a guy, got like Benite, who knows a lot about hitting jump shots. So, boy, how do you slow this guy down? And Clavel has just been terrific tonight. Remember, Puerto Rico won the first game between these two teams, 75-72. They were trailing until the fourth quarter, and that's when they really came good. And offensive foul on Condit, I believe. Setting the pick. Yago over to Leonardo. He's fouled while attempting a three by Ford. So three free throws for Leonardo Mendoza. Golly. Ford, what are you doing? Got to get a hand in the face, but. So for the third time tonight, a three point shooter has been fouled. And for the first time tonight, it was a Brazil player that was shooting, but Leonardo misses the first. Ooh, only makes one of three but the ball batted back to him now Benite and there you go they end up getting four points on that trip down the floor anyway and suddenly how quickly a lead can disappear it's just a one point advantage the importance of rebounding boy Ortiz good ball movement then he lost it then he goes up against Caboclo and here's Yago on the break Outside to Benite, will it be two in a row? Nope, he misses everything. Then Bruno Caboclo with the foul. That was Benite hitting a three. It's more like the Benite than the miss. And the handoff to Condit. Gets it back, though. Great work by Condit. Yago dancing around. Benite. Leonardo Mendel. Oh, quick pass. Look at that. The lob, or rather the alley oop to Ortiz. Uh, Puerto Rico back up by five. Yago drives in, misses there quickly, is Leonardo Mendel, and he is fouled by Waters. Well, it's just a terrific pass by Waters. Great control. Ortiz has been impressive. Yeah, 
Ortiz 10 pound, 10 points. Two rebounds, couple of assists. He's played some mean defense. Leonardo sinks that one. And misses the second, but again ends up with a basketball after a missed free throw. Now the pass. And Leonardo missing Mariano there for the offensive rebound and put back. Oh, nobody picks up Waters. He just kind of like snuck into the lane. It was almost as if nobody knew he had the ball. He's sneaky good. Vitor Benite, no. And Condit. So I thought played very well at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament for Tokyo. Of course, that was before they made the coaching change from Cassiano to Cologne. And Ortiz, right on cue. He is having himself a game tonight. Wow. The one thing about the Puerto Rican players, they are so confident. They'll just take a shot like that. You know, most players you'd be like, oh, that's not a good shot, but they just look so confident. You're like, take it. Clavel drives in. And Leonardo says, don't call that foul. Yeah, absolutely, that's a foul. Unless he was saying that he had turned it over or something. But anyway, Clavel goes to the line. Brazil just haven't quite been able to get over the hump as uh, they've chased this Puerto Rico team. They pulled it within one. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like we're starting to see some signs of the old Puerto Rico. It's been a while, but it's almost as Clavel misses that one. Kind of the uh, the Puerto Rico we saw two decades ago, maybe. Seem to have a little extra bounce in their step, some quality. I mean, the quality in their backcourt is outstanding. Oh boy, Clavel. He can shoot three pointers with the best of them, but he's missing his free throws. And we all know what that can do to you, to a team. Puerto Rico 10 to 16 at the line. There's Marcelino missing with his little runner. He's kind of going away from the basket. And just not necessary for Puerto Rico. They turn it over. Marcelino, a beautiful bounce pass. Gabriel Galvanini getting his first field goal. Now the pass to the corner. That's Ford missing. Oh boy, he's heating up now, folks. Galvanini. Two consecutive buckets for him and Brazil once again down by one. Waters gets in. He's rejected by Galvanini. Get it out of here. Look at him again. And they are waiting. They know what Waters can do after what happened in the first game. And they are waiting on him. Even so, Puerto Rico basketball. They lead by one, six minutes into the second half. Romero not tempted to shoot the three. Timaj Parker, here's Romero. No, he's gonna go right at Mariano, and this time doesn't win the battle. Brazil with a chance to go in front finally. 
Yago to Mariano for three. And Parker scraps away. Here comes Waters. And the lob! Great hustle down the floor by Wheeler. Great catch. Great pass, Waters. And it feels like we've been here before. Brazil have been knocking on the door, about ready to take the lead, and they just don't. And Puerto Rico go right to the other end. They get a bucket in transition. They hit a three. Leonardo Mendel, that three-pointer is good. He's been waiting to hit that, and he has tied it. Brazil starting to look somewhat irrepressible, like they're going to take this game over. Clavel, not this time. Romero saves it in bounds. Great play, Leonardo Mendel. What a play by Wheeler to come up with a steal, and now it leads to a break for the Border Quads. Clavel goes, oh, and the follow by Wheeler. Are you kidding me? Wheeler. Really making his presence known. Outstanding. Mandel run off the line, so he goes in for the two-handed jam. And traveling on Romero. Well, Brazil have been very good in this quarter, outscoring Puerto Rico 22 to 14. Leonardo Mendel has been terrific. And if they score here, they will have the advantage for the first time in a long time. Again, Leonardo Mendel. And off the rim. Here comes Jordan. Jordan Howard puts it up from deep. Now Benite goes behind the back. Gets it up quickly. Wow, that might just be the play of the game right there. What a tremendous finish by Vitor Benite. Look at him go behind the back to avoid the defender. Just an unbelievable sequence by Vitor Benite. And look at the emotion from the bench. So it's not just a lead, it's a three-point lead. I mean, Puerto Rico, I wouldn't say have been bad. It's just that Brazil have just been, again, irrepressible in this quarter. Howard, silky, smooth, runner. Uh-oh, crossing him up, Marcelino, that was short. His shot doesn't look quite right tonight, and he's just wondering maybe if he's jet-lagged. And Romero, nowhere to go, doesn't turn it over, gets the ball up, and is able to score. That did not look likely. But he was able to get it, and Puerto Rico back in front. Brazil trying to hold it for the last shot. Wheeler, who's been terrific. 
Marcelino. And with that, free throws for Marcelino. Just a, not a good foul by Romero. He ties it. It was time for Puerto Rico. And Howard fouled by Marcelino. 1.8 seconds left. Can you believe it? A foul called as Thompson was attempting a three pointer. This is incredible. And it's Benite. And yes, it's a good call. He's got his hands on him as he's going up. I mean, I don't want to say it was a good call, but you can understand why the call was made. There was definitely some contact. Oh, what a blow for. Now the question is, it looks like definitely he was shooting when the whistle was blown. So tough blow for Brazil. Even so, there's definitely contact out there, and that's what that's the, the risk that you run when you are defending that three-point shot that closely. And I think they want to see had the buzzer already gone. Is that what they're looking at? Yeah, there's time, so he'll get free throws. Three free throws. Well, at least. Referees are not going to be on the Christmas card list of these Brazilian fans making that call at the end, but I think it's the right call. So here he is. Thompson goes to the line, makes the first 0.2 seconds. So that's what they're going to see, how much time should be left on the clock. So there's not really anything that Brazil can do here. In terms of like getting off a shot, they'd have to throw it right to the rim. And have to be a perfect, you know, tap. And you can see the disappointment on Conti's face as he leans against the LED. Well, still plenty of time to go, 10 minutes. And Puerto Rico, somehow, some way, have gone back in front. They're on top 73 to 70 over Brazil. Three more threes for Brazil. But 
the reaction from Brazil after that shot. It's almost as if they've lost the game. They still got 10 minutes to go. They got to rally themselves. What a great, great quarter that was. Excitement. That was a big moment right there, and it really felt like the momentum was swinging, but then Philip Wheeler came into the show and really got it going. Leonardo had a terrific quarter. Benite as well, although he did commit that foul right at the end. Scanning the barcode to get courtside 1891 in your smartphones, folks. Philip Wheeler play for Puerto Rico back at the 17 FIBA Basketball World Cup in Argentina. A great Puerto Rico team. So many good players got third place in the end. On three. And Romero picks up another foul. He's got three fouls now. Yago. Romero battles, but Galvanini with the rebound. Still out rebounding Puerto Rico now 33 to 29. So Wheeler called for a hold. Yago leans in, can't get it to go, and Wheeler has it, crosses, gets it up to Romero, he goes up and misses a dunk. And it looks like he might have actually hit his head on the rim. And now Brazil throw it out of bounds. Romero's gonna go over to the bench and say, am I bleeding? Because he went up, look at this. See if he hits his head. I know he didn't hit the head on the rim, he gets hit by a Brazil. The way he was holding his head, it was as if he'd hit it on the backboard of the rim. Thompson fouled by Leonardo. His look gets it to Ortiz. He's got to put it up. He does, and he scores. I mean, I, I am speechless with how Ortiz has contributed offensively tonight. His ability to make shots right at the buzzer. He has been terrific.
Alvinini. Oh boy. Sweet move. Just so patient. Power to Romero goes up and he's not going to miss this dunk. Ortiz and now Romero has 16 points. Ortiz has 14. Galvanini going at Wheeler. And Wheeler very close to committing a foul. Galvanini becoming a factor. Bruno Caboclo getting ready to come back into the game. Three pointer. Wow. I mean, Ortiz is so good right now. It's like he could beat anybody in the world. I, I have not seen a Puerto Rican player with that much confidence. I mean, they're all confident, but he just looks incredibly steely confident. Like he could move mountains. What a performance. 17 points. All of his contributions are huge. Scanning the barcode to get the FIBA basketball World Cup app. Cavanini's been tough. Here he is getting away from Ortiz, who didn't want to foul, but Romero getting that dunk. I mean, Galvanini again. Here's Ortiz. And let me tell you something about Ortiz. 17 points, six of nine from the floor. That's his first three. He's five of seven inside the arc. Made all four of his free throws, three rebounds, two assists, two steals, plus 20, the best plus 20 efficiency, the best on his team. There is Benite missing down low, but there is Galvanini once again refusing to allow his team to fade into oblivion. He has been great. Ortiz again and draws the foul. Makes the first. Only makes one or two, but Brazil do not get the rebound. And Ortiz doesn't wait around. He goes out and hits a three pointer. This is what I'm talking about. This guy is taking on the world right now. I mean, he is. He and Galvanini are the two guys that are taking center stage for their teams. And Caboclo held on to it too long, and now Ortiz, one spin move too many. Benite on the break, and that was a big turnover. They were teetering a little bit, and if uh, Ortiz had played with a little bit more control and they'd got another basket, that lead would have grown. Even so, I mean, you can't complain. Look at that, the telegraph pass from Thompson, Galvanini, and there's Caboclo hustling down, and a couple of turnovers helping Brazil get right back in it.
And you just love seeing players like Galvanini really emerge. And that's what happens in the qualifiers. We've seen it before with Yago. We've seen it with so many players. We've seen it with Ortiz tonight, obviously. And we're seeing it with Galvanini. Well, it's no secret that Galvanini is a good player with Flamingo playing in Brazil and the Basketball Champions League. Actually averaging 10.2 points, 6.2 rebounds in the Basketball Champions League. But his performance tonight is uh, different level stuff for him, I would think. There he is, and he's not coming out of the game. He's got 11 points now, five rebounds, two blocks. What a... Titanic colossal meeting between two foes in America. These countries again have really gotten after each other in the basketball court over the years. And here is the latest edition. It has been something special. And to be honest, probably for my money, the game of the day. Here goes Tremont Waters, goes behind his back. Was it necessary? Yago pulls up on the break, left wide open. Caboclo with an important rebound over to Benite, and he misses a three. Just feels like it's been that way all night for Brazil. Just so close. Waters splits the D, leans in, misses, and now a chance for Leonardo Mendel, drives all the way. Sixteen for Mendel, plus twenty-two efficiency. Ortiz has a game out plus twenty-three efficiency. Here he is. Beautiful bounce pass, and then Waters finishes. Wow. That Waters is like, must be quiet on his feet because he ends up being wide open. Like, people, nobody is aware of where he is. Good play by Leo Mandel. Remember, Brazil can qualify for the FIBA Basketball World Cup with a win. Otherwise, as Jordan Howard misses the three, Puerto Rico have a chance, but they need some help. Uh, but their main concern is holding on for the win. Yago for three. You can count it. Brazil have taken the lead. Again, Leo Mandel has been so good. He passes out to a wide open Yago, who, despite missing a couple recently, continues to back himself. And Brazil go back in front for the first time since they led 69-68 late in the third quarter.
See Carlos Arroyo dressed in black there behind the bench. The legendary Puerto Rico point guard, now the national team manager. Make the extra pass, run back. This is Yago. Again. Multiple threes for Yago tonight. By the way, did anybody see Carlos Arroyo in the greatest beer run ever? The movie. I just happened to be watching it one night and this guy came on the screen. I was like, that looks like Carlos Arroyo. I didn't believe it until I looked it up and it was him. Well, he was not dribbling a basketball. He was uh, in Southeast Asia during uh, the Vietnam War. Anyway, back to the game. Oh boy, Romero was open. Here he is. He gets it late. Galvanini. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. Romero. Cologne doesn't want his team to get down on themselves, the players. Clearly steps out of bounds with his right foot. The disadvantage of having big feet. Oh, another three pointer here would be a real have the feeling of being a dagger for Brazil if they could get one. Benite for three and look at the hustle from Mandel. I mean, you can't say enough. And Mariano gets hit in the face and the whistle blows. Look at the hustle from Leo Mandel. So yeah, the foul is called on Romero. Fans clearly enjoying themselves more now than ever that their team has the lead. Yago. Leonardo Mendel drives in. He gets blocked by Romero. And they're just able to save it. Now quickly up it goes. And look at that. Boy, what a play that was. Romero sprinting ahead. What a pass by Waters. Lightning quick, fast break. Yago high. A little teardrop and misses and Ford with the rebound and here comes Puerto Rico now with a chance to go back in front and Yago gets Tremont Waters. So Waters playing his friend playing his basketball in France. There's a teammate of Victor Wembanyama. He's coached by France national team boss Vincent Collet. Mariano goes out. Bruno Caboclo, Caboclo rather, excuse me, guarding Romero. Here's Ortiz and Galvanini, two guys that have really been standouts tonight. Ortiz gets it back and might have taken a rough shot, but he wanted a foul. He doesn't get it. And now it's Brazil's turn. Yago is going to go right at Ortiz. Traveling. And Ortiz wins another battle. I think if the game were to end right now, you'd probably have to say Ortiz is the player of the game for this Puerto Rico team. The way he has lifted them in this in crunch time. He's got 21, which is a which is a game high, in fact. 
Here is a jump shot from Waters. And Brazil have to call timeout. Galvanini trying to hang with him. There is just some good talent on the court tonight, so no timeout. I thought there was, but Puerto Rico lead it by two. Once again, the crowd nervous. Oh, Benita goes right down the lane. Waters for three, it looks good, but it was long. And now Yago. Oh, beautiful bounce pass, Caboclo. And somehow, Leo Mendel missed the layup. And it goes to Romero, who tries to hold on to it, but it was well defended down low. He couldn't quite control the pass. And with 45 seconds left, it's knotted at 90. Brazil's players got to figure it out right now on the court. No timeouts. Benite. Three-pointer from Mariano. Misses everything. And the shot clock violation, and look at this, with 24.5 seconds remaining, Puerto Rico look as if they're going to have the last shot. Unless, that is, Brazil elect a foul. Of course, they've only had three fouls because they wanted the last possession, which in a game like this, it might not be a bad idea the way these teams have been putting the ball in the basket tonight. I don't know if you want to see Puerto Rico take the take it all the way down to the buzzer and put up a potential game winning shot. I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the things that really struck me looking at that timeout is every single face that you looked at, you're like, wow, that guy's made some big time plays tonight. I mean, it has been, you can say that about both teams. It really has been an amazing game and it's been all hands on deck for both teams. So what kind of wrinkle are we gonna see here from Brazil? try to force a turnover. Maybe they'll commit a foul, put Puerto Rico on the line. Remember, Puerto Rico haven't shot it great tonight, 14 to 21. And this might be a case where they definitely want to have the ball in the hands of their best free throw shooter. So it was token pressure, and now Clavel brings it up. Final seconds ticking off the clock. Will Brazil be playing for overtime here? Certainly, Puerto Rico, this is their chance to win it. It's go time. Waters, 
Four seconds on the shot clock. Waters puts it up from the elbow. Good! You are kidding me! Right at the buzzer! Tremont Waters has won the game for Puerto Rico. It's heartbreak city for Brazil. And I don't know if Brazil are thinking they need to review that to see if he got it off in time. And the referees are like, nope, that is it. What a finish. Waters and Brazil will have to wait to qualify for the World Cup. Who knows, it could be Puerto Rico's night. Maybe they'll book their spot depending on results. He got it off in time and that was an excellent shot. That was money in the bank. That was ice running in his veins. But that's the way it's been all night for Puerto Rico. So many players tonight have contributed. They look like a great team, folks. This is a team that has just taken a big step closer to the World Cup qualification. And Brazil, brutal defeat. They played well, but not well enough. Puerto Rico win at 92 to 90. Unbelievable. They sweep their opponents in the qualifiers, having won the previous game by three. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, look at those numbers. I'll let you digest them. Just incredible stuff. This is a team that looked like it was really together tonight. And now a little bit of uh, unfortunate scenes here. I don't know. I think Yago took exception to some of the celebrations that were going on. So he went up and said something. And we definitely don't want what has been a spectacular game to be spoiled by by a fight here at the end. Philip Wheeler trying to get the guys over and to focus. I mean, it's tough losing at home if you're Brazil because obviously your fans come out to support you. You had a chance to qualify for the World Cup. And it's tough for Waters and Cologne. You can see what it means to him. I mean, they haven't qualified for the World Cup, but I suppose he feels like he's been under a lot of pressure in this job. That, you know, you, you don't take these job, jobs knowing uh, they're going to be easy jobs. They're pressure jobs. You got to coach every possession. You got to get the right team selection. Uh, there's just so many things that go into it. You talk to any national team coach, and Nelson Colon, he has brought a vibe back to Puerto Rico that I have to say it is looking promising for the Border Quads. So here are the highlights, and uh, yeah, I just find it remarkable. Tremont Waters hitting the game winning shot right at the end. And that is the danger. You know, I was talking about it as we look at the highlights. If you're Brazil, do you want Puerto Rico to have the last shot the way these teams have been pouring in the points? Or do you want the last possession? And I would have really been tempted to commit a foul and put Puerto Rico on the line where they'd made 14 of 21 on the night. And then maybe give yourselves uh, the last chance uh, to score. Uh, I know that as coaches, you want to trust your defense. And I'm not saying that that is wrong, but it just didn't work out that time for Brazil because if Puerto Rico have anything, they have got guys that can score from outside, whether it's Ortiz, whether it's Waters, whether it was Howard, Clavel. Uh, you were really running the risk of ha what happened right there at the end happening. So 92 to 90 Puerto Rico winning it. And now they need the USA to beat Uruguay and they need Colombia to beat Mexico to wrap up their spot in the FIBA Basketball World Cup tonight. Otherwise, uh, they will, regardless, they'll be getting ready for their last game, which will be in Medellin in Colombia on Sunday. And I don't know, maybe that celebration or that that look of uh, the tears from Cologne, he realized, you know, there's no way we're going to lose it at, at Colombia. They're not going to lose that game regardless. So they're either going to qualify tonight or they're going to qualify on Sunday.
So Brazil now, their path obviously still depends on other results. But remember, their next game is against the USA. So that game on Sunday night, well, we're going to see what happens. And it is it is unfortunate that uh, some of the scenes we saw right at the end, and I don't want to say who was right, who was wrong, because really this game was played in a good spirit, perhaps with the exception of the body blow delivered by Romero on Mariano. So here is Group F, 8-2 and two USA over the top. Remember, uh, they still got some games left. Puerto Rico still in third behind Brazil. Brazil get that participation point tonight. And if you look at the road to the World Cup, you got nine teams from Europe. Uh, the only team from the Americas so far to qualify, Canada, Cote d'Ivoire from Africa, and from Asia, Lebanon, New Zealand, Australia, China, and of course, the Philippines and Japan, two of the host nations in the World Cup. So it's all happening, folks. The Americas qualifiers definitely are alive and kicking, and this is the game-winning shot. Tremont Waters over Galvanini, who was one of the outstanding players. And so many plays, so many contributors for the Borquas tonight. It is one of their best performances, I have to say, that I've seen in quite some time, and especially with so much riding on this game, not to mention the fact that they were the away team tonight. Could have been plenty of times plenty of chances for them to kind of fold up their tent and go home but it wasn't going to happen they were determined and now brazil have to refocus and get ready for the next one